so kartik uh, uh, without wasting time we can start uh, we'll put it on youtube for others because i can see on this screen there are uh, people who are visiting the webinar uh, page but maybe due to some issues some of them might not be able to join okay, okay. so it's live on the platform as well if i am not yeah. wrong. yes okay so you want me to start or you want to introduce and then start how is it uh, yes i will uh, introduce uh, you uh, so welcome everyone uh, this is uh, this is the session webinar session that uh, is here uh, because of the request that has come to us uh, on electric vehicle design uh, now kartik is the co-founder of urban sphere and kartik will tell a bit about it's better you talk about yourself because i'm i'm a bit you have done so much uh, you know in in last 5 6 years and uh, now kartik has also raised uh, investment uh, of somewhere around 52 i i i don't know kartik will tell so 50 cr something uh, for his startup urban sphere and uh, they are working on a last uh, mile uh, connectivity right so better yes. kartik if you, if you can uh, go and sure sure there's some details about you so thanks avinash thank you for organizing this uh, diy guru has always been exciting for me as a, as also being a part of diy guru as well as uh, as a part of electric vehicle mobility i have been in the electric vehicle space it's been around 6 years started in 2016 we started retrofitting cars in the year 2016 we had couple of licenses back then but due to the no not so promising scenario in the retrofitment space so we so very soon realized that that is not going to work out so we started another enterprise where we started providing design services for electric vehicle startups what is the exact packaging that is required or what is the exact design what is the process of design that an electric vehicle should undergo because everyone thought just getting it to china bringing it things assembling in india would work out but sooner or later every company understood that is not going to happen but none of these companies understood because they were not from the automotive background so that is where we started an entity back then after that i have co-founded a company called as eki motors where we design develop prototype and it is into the stage of manufacturing for electric two wheeler motorcycle so in that company as well we have close to roll, raised around 10 to 12 crores till today apart from that uh, post that i work with a couple of companies after co-founding erki i was uh, leading the research and development division with LML Electric uh, from April to June. Post that, I co-founded this company with my partner uh, for, called as Urban Sphere. This is basically a four-wheeler commercial vehicle which is going to focus majorly on mid-mile and last-mile delivery challenges that is happening not only with respect to an electric vehicle point of view, it is also with respect to a connected vehicle point of view. So this is a brief background. And in today's session, we will briefly understand what is the design process that anyone should understand to take it forward so let's keep this an interactive session we have probably around five participants in this google meet and we have probably a couple of other participants who are there in the diy guru platform in the back end so if any questions you get on the platform avinash you can just post it here so that we can understand they, those questionnaires as well i hope this sounds good sure sure Okay. So taking it forward, so our major idea today through DIY Guru is going to be let's learn new things, let's convert them into an idea, let's create new teams and create a new goal, create a new segment in electric vehicle every day. So that is the major initiative that we are going to take through electric vehicle design fundamentals. So understanding this, let's start from basic. Everybody knows today what is an electric vehicle, electric vehicle is run with traction motors connected to single time or rechargeable batteries. Rechargeable batteries might be your lead acid battery packs, might be your lithium ion battery packs, might be sodium battery packs, or you might also end up using fuel cell electric vehicles as well into the market. 
So understanding this, the roadmap of EV industry globally in the year 1899, it's almost around 120 years from today, the electric vehicle industry had already achieved a top speed in the vehicle of 100 kilometers per hour. So that was the year when the electric mobility, mobility was at its pace. But because of the battery technology, the, the vehicles could not come into existence. But later, but the IC engines took a very good leap and they went forward. So then again, in 1975, the actual craze had come into picture in Europe where the small mobility fleets wanted started converting to electric vehicles because of the raise in fuel prices back then. So that is where in 1975, a company started manufacturing mass production of passenger mobility vehicles for using electric vehicle technologies using lead acid battery packs. The four force version was the Reva I car that we seen in India, but that vehicle was launched in 2005. In 2008, when Tesla Model S was initially launched, so that was the first vehicle which had long range battery pack. So that is where the that was the third major milestone. In 2017, when Tesla launched the Tesla Model 3, that was their best energy efficient motor, and that is where the costing came down. So that is how the electric vehicle industry has grown. It is not a new age industry. This industry is much more superior, much more older to your internal combustion engines. So when we speak of the different types of electric vehicles, electric vehicles come under four different types. One is a battery powered electric vehicle. That is high. Next one is your hybrid electric vehicle. Next is your plug-in hybrid electric vehicle and your fuel cell electric vehicle. So in your battery electric vehicle, it is going to be directly, you are going to charge your vehicle either by an AC or DC source. If you are using an AC charging station, it might be your home charger or the level one charging station that is deployed by our governments. If you are using a DC charger, DC charger is going to be mostly a fast charging networks like how the Teslas and Rivians have been installing their networks. So your main capacity of your fuel is going to be in the battery pack and you will not have any other external sources of energy. Whereas when it comes to battery powered electric vehicles, India had BEVs in the year 2002 by Reva, not the Reva I. Reva I is the advanced version. Reva came into existence in 2002. When it comes to two wheelers, your bikes came into existence in India in the year 2000. So that is when battery powered electric vehicles started deploying in India. When it comes to hybrid electric vehicle, hybrid electric vehicle, this technology has three different domains in it. One is simple hybrid, mid hybrid, and your mid or mild hybrid or your complex hybrid. The simple hybrid concept is you will have your fuel source. Your fuel source will be charging your battery and that battery will be continuously driving your motor. That in your simple, whenever you're standing in a signal or whenever you are under an RPM of zero to 1500, only then your electric motor will function. Post the 1500 RPM of your wheels, you will shift automatically towards your petrol or diesel. India had its first ICE, uh, high HEV vehicle that was Mahindra Scorpio in the year 2001. So that is when, if you remember, most of the Mahindra cars had a embossed written as micro hybrid in the side of the first Scorpio that was launched. So that is where we back then had the electric vehicle technology, but we were not aware that electric vehicle was actually into existence. So when it comes to the third type of plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, you have two parallel series that is running. One side, you have a separate series of ice. One side, you have a separate series of electric motor, which are coupled to the same gearbox, but these two cannot work together. When it comes to an hybrid electric vehicle, these two can work together. In P PHEV, it is something like you have an extra cylinder of LPG or CNG, which is connected. Either you use petrol or petrol, or you use a LPG or CNG gas. So in a similar way, this is how a few uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle is planned. Next comes to your fuel cell electric vehicle. You have a storage tank of H2 gas, or there are seven different types of fuels that can be used. One that is most popular and most easily available is your H2 gas. The next one is the next available gas is your ammonium fluids that is available. That is again a derivative of your CNG. So these are the two main fuel cell electric vehicle technologies that are currently run. This H2 gas undergoes a reaction and inside your fuel cell stock. That Hello, reaction... Sir. Yes. 
सर साउंड का थोड़ा सा प्रॉब्लम हो रही है सर थोड़ा सा डीप साउंड आ रहा है सर थोड़ा सा स्पीकली बोल बोले तो सर थोड़ा सा इजी होता इज इट बेटर नाउ नो सर साउंड इज लिटिल बिट स्लो एंड नाउ आई थिंक मेरे साइड में तो कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है इफ यू कैन चेक विद योर साउंड करने में कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है राइट राइट ओके सर आई कैन ट्राई टू रीजॉइन इट ओके प्लीज ट्राई टू रीड so in the fuel cell electric vehicle what will happen is your fuel stock will continuously generate electrons those electrons will be sent through a charger come your inverter because those electrons will not yes, have sir, no, no. no okay sir okay sir. sorry okay. sorry sir. sorry sir to not stop so you can use that particular charger come inverter to streamline your input that is coming from your fuel stock then charge your battery pack that will be a much easier approach when you compare india as a country india will have a good market when it comes to hevs phevs and fuel cell electric vehicles and compared to pure electric vehicles because we are not so energy rich efficient to take forward with respect to a complete battery powered electric vehicle technology so to have few understandings related to these vehicles the battery powered electric vehicles in india are available with the nexon ev tata tigor ev tiago ev and mahindra is coming up with kuv 100 they had recently launched xuv 400 in electric vehicle when it comes to hybrid electric vehicle the best example is mahindra scorpio and cias and many other every car every car that is under a bs6 norm today is having a electric vehicle in it it's not just an ic engine everything is under hybrid electric vehicle as far as most of the vehicles that are manufactured in bharat state 6 norm so theoretically speaking there is no ic engine today it's everything a derivative of an electric vehicle that is available today in the indian market with respect to phev phev nissan is trying this out is called as e note e note is a plug in high both plug in it has the petrol as well as it, it also has electric vehicle technology so this is how india is moving forward with respect to fuel cell technology toyota mirai is one of the major front runners even though we have uh, hyundai um, Hyundai Kona in the international markets, but India is still not introduced, and India is doing trial runs with respect to fuel cell technologies in the four wheeler as well as in two wheelers in the fuel cell sector. TVS and Triome, uh, Triome Technologies; these are the two companies which are trying to move forward with respect to the fuel cell technologies. So this is how the way forward is going to be for your electric vehicle industry. Understanding this, we will understand the design procedure. How do you actually design? when you start you should you should actually first select what is the sector or segment you are going to design an electric vehicle as you can see on the screen you have suvs you have sedans you have multi utility vehicles you have hatchbacks and all these vehicles need you need to understand who is your exact customer and what is his user analytics on day to day point of view how is he using that particular vehicle why is india moving forward from sedan to suvs there is a lot more suvs that is required in india when compared to sedan the major reason for most of the people why they are moving from sedan to uh, suvs in india is in india it is very difficult to have a very good road when you are driving sedan because sedan is going to have a very low center of gravity when compared to your suvs so you will not be able to handle your vehicle so that is why indians prefer to have a high heighted vehicle which is going to have good suspensions so that they do not have any medical emergencies or medical failures or even your technological failures when you are driving a sedan or a hatchback in india so india has turned itself from a hatchback or sedan point of view to a suv point of view or an mpv point of view over the years so uh, innova and scorpio has been the major front runners in this particular industry so you should follow this particular design once you understand what does the market require you will do an aesthetic design once you do the aesthetic design then you will design a powertrain packaging which area should your particular motor fed where should be your battery positioning where should you have a radiator what position should you actually follow followed by your auxiliary system auxiliary system is nothing but whenever you design a car should it have an air conditioning system should it have some ventilations on your seats should you have a massager should you have then it comes your infotainment design now every vehicle that comes today is a connected vehicle architecture 
So should you have what kind of infotainment? Who is going to power that? Should you reach out to JBL? Should you reach out to Harman? What is that infotainment design that you should follow into your design? Forward, we all know cruise control has been a major advantage in your uh, highway drives. And you have seen XUV700 and MG Hector playing a very good gameplay with respect to level one autonomous vehicles. So whether you should consider ADAS or if we consider Tesla coming into India with level four autonomous or let's say autopilot, will that work out in India? So all these research needs to be catered even before you understand what needs to be done. So once you understand the requirements from point one to point five, you understand what is your battery requirement, how large your battery should be. Based on that, you have to plan your charging infrastructure. Based on point one to point seven, then you have to validate the design. How am I going to integrate all these things and validate and then enter into the design process? So this is how your approach is going to be. So if you can see in the left hand side, you can see this is the uh, Tesla Model 3 as an example because I have most of the images related to that. So the first image in the left hand side, this is the basic input or let's say the aesthetic design that how my exterior and my interior vehicle is going to look. So considering this exterior and interior design approach, we started analyzing what kind of motor is required, how do you position your battery pack, and what is your mechanical suspension technologies that you have to work, and what is your turning radius that is required, what should be your wheelbase, what is your braking system, all those powertrain packaging needs to be identified. Only based on those understandings, you will be able to understand what kind of infotainment can you provide, this is the HVAC articulation or the auxiliary system that is embedded into your Tesla Model 3, followed by your autopilot screen with respect to an ADAS. And this is your home charger and this is your fast charging capabilities that is available in the Tesla Model 3. So this is how you will have to tweak your understanding related to the design. This is not, this cannot be carried out by a person or by around a team of five to 10. You at least need engineers who have good experience as well as who are freshers who understand these technologies with an average gameplay of around 100 to 150 engineers to take it forward. So when we specifically speak of aesthetic design, what is that aesthetic design process that needs to be followed? Because vaguely, I've told you this is the aesthetic design that has come out. To reach to this design, you will have to go through a process. Once you understand your user discovery, you will have to go do a concept sketch. That concept sketch will, con will be converted into something called as computer aided styling. That computer aided styling will be converted into a clay model. That clay model will be then uh, reverse scanned using a 3D scanner. We'll use the concept of reverse engineering. Using reverse engineering, we'll have the non parametric modeling data that class a service designing will be used and it will be then done a parametric modeling that parametric modeling will be ended up in creating body invite body invite is nothing but creating your chassis chassis in four wheelers are of two kinds one is monocoque chassis and the other one is your body on frame chassis that is then doing the analytical validation using matlab using simulink you understand what exactly is required then you do your computational validation like your cfd your thermal analysis and take it for so just briefly understand with respect to the images point of view you have a basic set of sketches of these kind so this is how my vehicle should look then you do a computer aided styling that these are the curves that is required for example if you see there is a curve that is running through your wheel arch to your rear wheel and it goes through the back so that particular is called as a vehicle dna so to determine that particular vehicle DNA, you need to have your refined sketches. You need to have a computer aided styling. You do your computer aided styling on Autodesk alias. So based on all these research activities, you create a one is to one clay model to take it forward. So that clay model is then reverse scanned to identify the final smoothening finishes. How do you identify whether the finishing is smooth? If you can see in the clay studio, there are multiple strips of lights that is added on top so you coat a acrylic coating on your clay then you take a light understand what is the density of that what is the smoothness of that particular surface and once you scan this particular surface 
you get this called as the non-parametric modeling and you can again import that into alias and redefine your each curve convert that particular alias design into parametric in parametric usually you for, you use nx or you use catia then using catia you create these different body structures so that your vehicle is created safe you have a five star rated architecture your passenger inside are safe once you create that surface design then you go and do a structural analysis as well as your computational fluid analysis followed by your thermal analysis so then you articulate these results and then is your vehicle is ready for launch so this is how your vehicle iterations has been done the similar way once you identify this is the wheelbase this is my vehicle dynamics this is my width of the vehicle you do a vehicle dynamic calculation what is the exact motor that is required how is my motor controller going to work what is the charging requirements how do i plan my transmission design should i have a gearbox should i use it directly on the hub and you will again do a mathematical validation for that so similarly once your powertrain is designed and your other systems are designed you select a cell for example tesla uses a 18650 cell initially now they have migrated to a 32400 cell so how do you actually select that particular criteria is based on your space availability in your vehicle to have that particular space availability you need to have a good vehicle dynamics that is done so that is how you will do a selection of cell what kind of bms is required what kind of additional packaging that can be done to your battery pack so that it is safe followed by another math math mathematical validation so this is how the powertrain is going to be positioned in this this is an example of a 90d tesla model 3 90d which is having a rear wheel drive so this is how they have come to a conclusion of the battery pack and powertrain design so now when i compare an ice vehicle to an electric vehicle the ice vehicle is going to have a regular approach where you have your fuel you have a fuel management system on your screen and you also have a thermal management system on your dashboard so once the fuel starts entering into your fuel injection system you have two types of fuel injection you have valve type and you have a fuel injector so these two fuel injection systems are going to allow the fuel either petrol or diesel or even gases like your lpg and cng into your engine using your engine's movement a belt is connected to a starter motor that starter motor is then sent to a those connections are then forward sent to auxiliary system like your hvac systems and other systems your engine is then connected to a gearbox or a transmission that is then connected to your differential which drive to your wheels with respect to electric vehicles you would there are small changes that will follow you will have a battery management system you have battery you will also have the thermal management system that is similar that is already available followed by the inverter that transfers your energy of your battery pack to your motor then you also have your gearbox that is there followed by your differential and then moving forward to your uh, different uh, uh, regenerative braking and taking it forward to your wheels so what are the challenges that we are going to face and how when is the vehicle going to be ready and when is it going to be advanced so that we will understand so the major technology that is built on an ice vehicle is your engine your gearbox your uh, injection systems followed by your auxiliary system and followed by your exhaust system but in electric vehicle the 90 percent shareholder is your battery and your motor apart from that everything is your small integrations here and there so in india what is that that is going to have a very high penetration the very high penetration in india because of subsidy is going to have one is your two wheelers your three wheelers your commercial vehicles and buses because why buses buses because it is handled by the government so as you see the maximum state subsidies that is availed today is in this particular criteria <coughs> followed by cars in different categories followed by construction equipments and tractors why do tractors come in the last phase because tractors are most widely used in your rural areas in rural areas you don't have so much 
availability as i have been developing an electric tractor as well and being testing the major problem that we face today is we don't have electricity in major villages to charge the tractor so in the 80% of the villages that i send my tractor for testing i am not able to do the testing because there is energy problems in these areas where i want to deploy my tractor so the areas that you can focus in the coming years by 2030 is one is battery pack one is motor in battery specifically on battery materials what are the different kinds of battery materials in motor how efficient motor can we be designed if you are of a electrical or an electronics person please try focusing more on creating good battery management system designs vehicle control units motor control units in india because in india we still don't have much advanced infrastructure related to power electronics the thermal management system is again a substitute of pi so that is not a major issue the companies who are trying to build electric vehicles will have to plan a weight reduction or let's say a light weight substitute materials that are available so this area is basically a major advantage for aerospace engineers who are working in this particular for say the major areas which is going to see a decrease in the long run one is a multi speed gearbox and the turbochargers followed by a major under pressure companies are your engines and your injection systems which might be absolute which might not have the major market share as that is on today so to build an electric vehicle it is not so easy you need to have multi industry collaboration you need to have the auto industry because auto industry is a major game play followed by because you have a connected vehicle architecture you have it involved since you have big clusters bluetooth touch screen app os involved so you have a smartphone that is available followed by electronics since you are moving into ai to adas uh, automatic driver assistance system so you need electronics and communication to have better ergonomics or let's say better dynamics of the vehicle and smart material and smart manufacturing technologies you need people from aerospace and since today we are booming with respect to alexa siri and google assistant so you need your good sim connectivity and voice control whenever you are on the highway so you need good broadcasting support as well so six different industries coming together is going to be a major good collaboration for electric vehicle so considering this i have divided the major companies into four major criteria one is electric two wheelers electric four wheelers battery manufacturers and electric charging infrastructures so these are the major four areas where india and the world is booming so we as a company i cater two segments one is in the electric two wheeler and the other one is electric four wheeler gameplay so the major opportunities that you are going to have is in battery designing powertrain designing and the system integration if you are an electronics engineer you will have a very good gameplay if you are designing battery management systems motor controller units and other electrical electronic components that is there in india so this is what we have for today thank you for listening we are open for questions i guess still uh, people are joining <laughs> so okay. anyways we will share the recording uh, with those who are joining late and uh, yes now we are open to questions uh, you know any questions you guys have you can very well ask that's why we uh, you know the, the session uh, we wanted to be uh, much more interactive i think there was somebody who was raising his hand uh, yes there is some question on okay w what is the opportunity for uh, say mechanical engineer in the ev industry per se particularly mechanical engineer who has done btech uh, you know see if you say a vehicle the major area is going to be of a mechanical engineer it's not going to be electrical or electronics electrical and electronics is the brain and heart of the vehicle but designing the chassis designing the automobile styling making it giving it a good shape it all hand holds with respect to an industrial designer or who or who has good experience in mechanics 
So mechanical unit, drive train unit, braking system, you have your suspension systems. So the major 60 to 70% of the vehicle design is of a mechanical engineer. 30% is of your electrical electronics to design. Next, let's say a minute percent of one to two percent. If you want to have added features, let's have connected vehicle infrastructure and all those things. So that is an additional percentage. On a vehicle point of view, 70% is mechanical, 20 to 25% is going to be your electrical electronics. 5% is for other industries because you cannot have a vehicle today which is not connected. Right. Okay. Uh, hello? Yeah. Anyone? Uh, yes, sir, uh, just one question. Sir, uh, my question is, sir, what is the diploma polytechnic student scope in uh, electrical mechanical branch in this field? You are asking with respect sir, to I design am, uh, uh, or... No, 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 sir. Uh, sir, overall okay. whole industry, sir. Industry opportunities. Because okay. sir, I am now polytechnic third year student in electrical engineering background. Okay. So what are the scope and uh, what I can do after degree? But uh, currently this time I am final year and uh, six semester student. So after few months, I, my uh, di diploma was completed. So uh, what's good for me after completing diploma? So you are doing diploma in which uh, in the which electrical. category? In electrical. Uh, yes, yes, electrical. So since it is electrical, see in electrical systems we have our headlight system, we have our electrical wiring harness. You will have to understand the different voltage conditions that is there. You will have to work on different coding parameters. Let's say the powertrain is working on 72 volts and your other electrical systems work on 12 volts, 5 volts. So you'll have mm -hmm. to give the different color coding, understand whether that particular output is coming out. Right. Okay. So that electric wiring harness creation, you might have your own startup in that electric vehicle understanding. Okay, sir. So, sir, what's good for me after diploma? I can uh, join uh, BTEC, then I start this field uh, as a career. Yeah, it's better for me after uh, completing diploma. I enroll uh, in any uh, position in this field as a technician, and uh, throughout this time, I complete my BTEC also. Oh, what's, uh, what's better for me? You, it is better to always continue your uh, diploma to a bachelor's degree because that okay. will have a better growth in your career. Okay. If you start working now, you will have a good work experience after diploma, but mm. even after a couple of years, you will require bachelors to move forward to, let's say you are working under a manufacturing assembly now, and later okay. you want to become the manager, but in manager, there is a major requirement that you will have to yes, yes, obviously. be a bachelor degree uh -huh. and later you will also meet might require m tech or mba to move forward to higher levels so it is always oh. better to continue your studies after diploma mm. in parallel if you can do a evening job or let's say a second shift it is always better to uh -huh. do that. yes sir because sir my brother is working locomotive traction field so I think uh, locomotive electric traction is uh, as similar to electric vehicles. Uh, yes. Measure. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, so, so he tell me if you work uh, after diploma this field, locomotive traction field, and uh, throughout this time you complete your BTEC and uh, you can similar any course in this uh, kind of field. So it's better for uh, after three years uh, completing BTEC switch to locomotive to electric vehicles field that is good for your more better so what yes. do you think most of the locomotives are already electric today uh, in india which has yes. been slowly converted for example the one day bharat which came into existence one day bharat is working majorly on the electric vehicle point of view if you see rajdhanis that is running and shatabdis that are running in india those are no more diesel generated those are electric vehicle already and yeah. the bullet trains so that brother, india uh -huh. is going to enter most of the bullet mm -hmm. train technology is already electric and your yeah. metros that you see in most of the Indian cities, all yeah. those are already running on electric vehicle infrastructure, yeah. but there might be some problems in converting the complete fleet, but probably by yeah. 2040, India is going to have the complete locomotive into a uh, electric uh, point of view. Even we have boats in India running in electric yeah. vehicle technology. Uh, okay, so the week has... Uh, Yes, Parth. Uh, now we have to uh, take. Basically, a... sir, he work. Uh, he work in Alstom, sir. You know this company. 
so so he tell me about the those of things so i can decide after completing diploma i can join dui group provide a nano degree program correct sir yes uh, so this time uh, i want to join that uh, so i so think for that, that information probably you can contact avinash post this call he can guide you on okay. that okay part, uh, yeah so let's let's hear from vivek uh, there are yes hello hello yes uh, sir vivek yes yeah. sir uh, so yes, uh, sir. apart from the design uh, actually um, my background is mechanical so apart from designing uh, is there any uh, uh, in career opportunity in uh, battery management uh, uh, for the for the mechanical engineers battery management system design you will not be able, if you want to create an electronic control unit it will be a difficult task no no for for, for, for testing or for, for like a testing or thermal management management point of view yeah that is always going to be done by a mechanical engineer because you have to do the thermal analysis so most of the thing so, in battery management is thermal your understanding of how the electrons or how the electricity is flowing in and out so those things are majorly done by mechanical with you will have a couple of them from electronics as well in your test labs so uh, basically uh, my question is uh, uh, regarding industry point of view is any uh, any industry are uh, 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 manufacturing of uh, bms for the uh, bms or, or, or a thermal uh, thermal background for testing for, for a testing facilities or like that uh, is any companies or are majorly in working this group in india we have couple of companies who are manufacturing bms but testing bms i don't know how far they are doing physically because everything is automated with respect to their manufacturing of bms as well as the testing of bms so physically checking bms i don't know if anyone is doing the thermal analysis or like sir thermal or testing uh, everyone uh, uh. Or so, uh, uh, or like uh, like a uh, government bodies like a ICAT or uh, uh, or a uh, uh, yeah, uh, ARI, uh, they are, they are not testing uh, for uh, for the homolo uh, homologation of the vehicles. They are testing the batteries. Is there any uh, opportunities for the mechanical? Most of the time, it is mechanical grads only who are working in ARI and ICAT in this particular space. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Vivek. Okay, uh, there was one question from Abhishek. Uh, aesthetic versus auxiliary versus ADAS design. What is the difference? And which one has better scope? Aesthetic design holds the 70% weightage because it is your exterior and interior feel of a vehicle that you design. Next comes your auxiliary system. Auxiliary system is just a part, like your AC units, like your infotainment design. All those is going to be a major gateway. ADAS is purely on a software platform which is going to work on with your LIDAR sensors that you're going to use. So if you are a mechanical engineer, I would suggest you to work more towards the automotive design language rather than working towards auxiliary. Auxiliary is a hardcore experience topic. Usually freshers are not entertained in the auxiliary space. ADAS in India is not so much advanced uh, where in India you might get some scope to work, but ADAS system is going to take a lot of time to build in India. Okay, and I think uh, Dinesh uh, is asking about advanced driver assistance. Achha, uh, no, he, he had actually answered the okay. and he has ADAS. Answer. Done. Any other question, guys? Uh, LIDAR stands for? Okay. <laughs> So it is a sensor. LIDAR is a sensor. Light. Yes. It's, it's, so it's a LIDAR. light detection and ranging. How far, let's say you have an electric vehicle that is there. So how far is this electric vehicle standing from you? So this is how your LIDAR and radar works. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Uh, so in electric vehicles, sir, uh, there are two type of converter used: auxiliary converter and main converter. There are three converters actually that is used. One mm -hmm. is your uh, auxiliary systems. One is your DC DC, and then comes your inverter. So there are three different types. Okay. 
sir what is the purpose of auxiliary converter the by what what is the purpose of auxiliary converter major auxiliary converters are used between your power grids to your charging facilities or your charging stations because your charging infrastructure will be working at 10 kilowatt 15 kilowatt and 30 kilowatt so that is where your auxiliary converters came into picture when you are working with respect to a vehicle point of view you have your dc dc converters and you have your inverters which are working into that picture okay okay so we had one more question in the group how differential action drives ev so if you have one motor system design you have four wheels you need to power two wheels together so you need a differential that is connected to your motor using that differential mechanism only you will be able to deliver equal power to both of the wheels so that you have correct torque that is generated or else your vehicle will not be able to move forward if you have two different power deliveries to two vehicles then your vehicle will rotate circularly rather than rotate straight so that is how the differential action is required okay okay what is what is the use of auxiliary batteries i think uh, there are some vehicles which needs auxiliary batteries so difference between auxiliary and main battery what what are there uh, uh, is there any vehicle model which is there which uses both of them yeah so if you consider simple energy one which is not yet launched as a production model but you can see on the internet that you have a fixed battery at its foot and as soon as you open your seat you have an auxiliary battery or an extra secondary battery that is positioned in the in its base apart from that every vehicle actually has a small auxiliary battery that is connected to its iot system or a telematics control unit which only powers to collect the data if there is some activity that is happening when you are not using your vehicle so your main battery is going to drive the major potential when you run out of charge or when you want some emergency current so you use this auxiliary battery to drive it forward but this concept is going to soon run out because in india the main fixed battery is not going to work more so india is moving towards the swapping architecture rather than the fixed and the charging infrastructure if swapping comes into picture all your batteries are going to be your auxiliary batteries because you don't have any fixed batteries that is fixed onto your vehicle okay sir great uh i think we are now at the end of the session uh we mm -hmm. will be closing now and um, uh, the recordings yes any question uh, abhinav sir, sir one question sir uh, sir yeah. currently sir uh, sir maine suna tha ki sir abhi dipavali mein sir di guru se nano degree program ka sir kuch uh, uh, interesting sir offer kuch ya kuch aaya hai sir to sir ye tab right. tak continue rahega sir आई थिंक आपको कनेक्ट करना पड़ेगा शुभम से शुभम का नंबर शुभम साहब से मैंने सर अपडेट लिया था तो सर मेरा सर सर ये एक्चुअली सर इस टाइम सर मैं नहीं परचेस कर सकता हूँ क्योंकि अभी सर मेरा अप्रोक्स थ्री टू फोर मंथ्स बाद मेरा डिप्लोमा कंप्लीट होगा तो सर आई वॉन्ट टू परचेस आफ्टर कम्प्लीटिंग डिप्लोमा सो कब ऐसा ऑफर हम और दोबारा अवेलेबल हो सकता है आई थिंक एवरी दिवाली वी शेयर दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ ऑफर्स बिकॉज पूरे साल भर में जो हमारे पास कुछ ऐसे भी लोग होते हैं हु एक्चुअली वांट टू ज्वाइन द कोर्स बट बिकॉज ऑफ फाइनेंशियल प्रॉब्लम्स के चलते वो नहीं कर पाते हैं तो हमारा शुरू से ये एम रहा है कि हम लोग वैसे लोग को ना छोड़ दें बस पैसे के चलते देर शुड नॉट बी सम पीपल हु आर लेफ्ट आउट Uh, those who are uh, deserving and those who want to learn we never uh, you know make any uh, excuses from our side so koi nahi aap ek baar subham se baat kar lena i will uh, ask him uh, agar kuch aisa hai if you are enrolling at that time uh, to wo cheeze ho jayengi but diwali every diwali we have something like this aisa uh, kuch hota hai ki bahut hi uh, jo minimum price hota hai because similar courses will be uh, there on other platforms or sometimes on our platform as well uh, kabhi kabhi uski pricing 1 lakh bhi ho jati hai so wo vary karta hai depend uh, time to time 
बट इस वाले टाइम पे जो एनरोलमेंट्स हमारे पास होते हैं दैट इज मोर यू नो यू कैन से थोड़ा प्लेसमेंट ओरिएंटेड होता है बिकॉज मार्च का टाइम जो है वो प्लेसमेंट uh, का टाइम होता है तो मार्च जो है राइट right? एनीवेज anyway, आप एक बार सोम से कनेक्ट कर लेना मैं उसे आपको मैं कन्वे कर दूंगा दिस थिंग राइट यस अभिषेक ओके स्पीक इन इंग्लिश सर uh abhishek done. what do you want is that bms cover reason what is that is your exact doubt if you can please switch on your mic yes sir bms mean to say that what are the regions which are being covered under the bms actually bms means battery management system uh, yes. just i have heard that it is just like thermal management of the battery and all that things are uh, they are covered it we are doing with the help of a design uh, first we design and we do uh, prototyping and do check validation for the uh, what are the requirements as per the design is there so i i want to ask what are the regions means sub sections like that what are the sub sections which are there under are the 100 plus sub sections that bms works okay to briefly understand what you can do is you can go through ais 156 which is a major standard where how the bms functionalities are considered for any sort of electric vehicle that is going to be produced in india so you can go to a website called as icat go to the download section you have ais standards there go to ais 156 amendment 1 amendment 2 and amendment 3 you will understand what is the exact requirement for bms battery and charger and what how does they work With respect to Indian conditions, what is that you will have to understand? Okay, sir. Good, sir. One thing I want to know more, sir. Uh, which regenerate, uh, which battery material is better, and what are the parameters which judges the battery material? Battery material one is what is the life cycle that actually you are looking for a battery pack. It depends on that. So that is the major criteria that you have to start working on that. So. what exactly is required see there are materials that can run for one life cycle or it can run for 1000 there was one battery that i was just validating today with samsung that they have co developed with us a battery which can run for 4500 cycles so you have from one cycle to 4500 based on your requirement we select the chemistry for the battery but considering indian conditions and india if you say two wheeler in india so lfp chemistry would be better with respect to indian thermal conditions so that you don't have too much thermal runaway one two you have an average costing of lfp a little less because it drives almost around 2000 charge and discharge cycle so that will be a better composition for you with respect to two wheeler space but when you are working for a four wheeler space it is always better to work with an lfo combination lithium magne magnesium oxide because that has closely around 3500 to 4000 cycles which is going to perform sir i want to know that one more thing i want to know that how regenerative braking drives the ev as you covered one slide uh, in in so it so that the regenerative braking and the differential and it's uh, the battery uh, inverter and motors are connected one by one flow chart like that so yes. one my question is this so the regenerative braking is used because see anything that you do for a battery powered electric vehicle how much ever range you provide as a consumer you will have the trains anxiety so re- regenerative braking let's say you're driving on an highway and you press on your brakes and you stop your vehicle let's say in the next 300 meters so that energy that is driving your motor the polarity is as soon as it changes so that braking system will be able to extract some amount of energy let's say around 3 to 4 extra kilometers onto the board so always having regenerative braking is an advantage for you when compared to just having regular brakes this is an this is not an add on feature this is the feature that is available that is capable by every motor because every electric vehicle motor is also a generator so if we apply the regenerative braking then some amount of energy is transferred in the batteries yes it is going to recharge the battery With a very minimal, with a very minimal range of three to five okay. kilometers maximum. So, uh, if I ask, sir, sir suppose uh, in hundred kilometer we do some regenerative braking, then it will charge around about three four kilometer range nearby. Depends on the braking pattern and the road condition. You cannot just say that you will be able to go three four times. 
sometimes it might be zero sometimes it might be five sometimes it might be higher than five i have seen certain conditions while driving we have touched around 10 kilometers as well motor motor uh, so the the charge is near about to able to drive 10 kilometers or like that something extra 10 kilometers you'll be able to drive okay okay and one more thing sir i want to know that under bms the thermal management uh, profile can you describe uh, describes little little like that so that overview i'll get you term terminology said in bms thermal management yeah so basically you see in india you have a lot of uh, thermal uh, conditions that is happening your environment temperature keeps changing if you are in southern part it's generally cooler when you travel to the north your temperature keeps increasing so your battery management system actually recognizes and make sure your battery stays in a safe reach because we have seen a lot of batteries that have exploded in year in this year in india because those are not actually having a good battery management system design as per indian conditions so that is where in india your battery pack should lie between minus 10 degrees centigrade and 45 degrees centigrade if any of these parameters exceeds your battery will go under an explosion it will enter into fire so that is how you'll have to maintain this temperature so to maintain this temperature you would have to have a good thermal management system that is mapped in your battery management system minus 15 to 45 degree right minus 10 minus, minus 10 to 45 degrees centigrade for an mmc and lfp chemistry in india it's it's also mentioned in uh, the amendment uh, you told for the AIS one five six, like right? No, no, that is not mentioned. This is the battery's compatibility. Okay, okay, it's battery compatibility. And one more thing, sir, you uh, tell told that NMC and LFP. What is the difference between both? NMC chemistry holds maximum of nickel, magnesium, and cobalt. LFP is a lithium, forest, uh, phosphite, and sulfur. So these are the two different chemistries that is available. So uh, LFP is lithium phosphide silver, right? Yes. And NMC is nickel, nickel, magnesium, manganese, and cobalt. Magnesium and cobalt. Okay. So uh, the any difference just is the uh, metal difference uh, only, or any uh, internal difference is also there as per the chemistry point of view. The complete chemistry changes in both of them. There is no similarities. Okay. Okay. And uh, which is better to use? I hope as per Indian chemistry, the better to use LFP like that. Everyone in India is currently using NMC because it is cheaper when compared to LFP. But we will be going to the as per the AS156 Amendment 3 released on September 29th. You have to use LFPs only to take it forward because NMC is not capable of withstanding a temperature up to 300 degrees centigrade. Thank you, sir. It was a good session. Good day. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Karthik. I think uh, uh, we can wind the session now. And thank you, everyone, for uh, patiently listening and joining and interacting. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Have a great day. Thanks, Karthik. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye.